Oh hey, what's happening? Cody here, and thank you so much for tuning in for this week's video. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I paint an SRT Hellcat Dodge Challenger, but that's not all. I'm also going to be showing you how you can be inspired to paint anything in the world. And that sounds pretty broad, but rather you're a wildlife, landscape, or portrait painter, how you can start to branch off and do other things, like what I did in this video. So, I hope you enjoy, let's roll. For this painting, I decided to pull out the projector. Since I don't have that much experience painting or drawing cars, it helped me really put together the drawing fairly quickly, and I can jump right into the painting. So let's talk about subject matter here. And one of the key things to trying something different is it doesn't have to always be perfect. It doesn't have to be this giant epic landscape, and it doesn't have to be this iconic dynamic portrait. It could be something very simple like the fruit in your kitchen or simple objects laying around your house. And while trying something new, it's important to keep it really simple. So with this image, it was actually a fairly complex background, but I wanted to simplify it and just focus in on the car and the track that it's racing on. And maybe you could go and paint the fruit sitting on your kitchen counter. And yes, you look at it every day, it might not be that inspiring to artists who maybe paint epic landscapes or portraits. But I think to do something different is really important. To push yourself in a new direction and try new things. Because you never know where the, these new ideas are going to come from. And one of the things you can do is to incorporate some of the techniques you use in your current work into the new project you're working on. And with the Challenger, I try to incorporate the same techniques I use with painting wildlife portraits. That is beginning with the eyes, working around the face until it's finished, and then moving into the background. And I think bringing in some familiarity into the work can really help you succeed with these new projects you're working on. You'll come away with some new ideas and some new techniques. And I think it's absolutely crucial for artists to be constantly pushing ourselves and experimenting with new ideas, pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone to try new things. Because as artistic creators, we should always have new ideas running through our heads and always striving to get better, always striving to improve on our techniques, color mixing, you name it. And you have to know that some of these experiments are not always going to work. They're not always going to turn out to be masterpieces. And you always have to pick yourself back up again when they don't work and keep trying and keep pushing yourself to get better with it. But sometimes these little experiments do work and then you can turn around and incorporate those ideas into your current work. And maybe you're a landscape painter and you're looking at this image of this epic landscape with these snow-capped peaks and you're thinking, Man, I don't know, those peaks look awfully complex. I don't know if I can do that. Well, that's the only way you're going to improve as an artist is to look at these aspects of a painting or a photograph that make you a little nervous and to do it anyway. And that's how we improve as artistic creators. And one of the things that made me a little nervous about painting this Challenger was the amount of complexity and all the detail there is in the grill and how complex yet refined that SRT and the Hellcat is on the grill. And it's important to know while doing these small experimental pieces that you're probably not going to be putting a frame on them and putting them in a gallery. That you are purely painting this for yourself, just to enjoy the process of painting, getting lost in that podcast you're listening to, singing along to a tune you really like, or just enjoying the process of mixing your colors on that palette. 
And another important thing to keep in mind while experimenting is to not be painting on these large, expensive, stretched canvases. Because when you're experimenting with new techniques or ideas, it's important to keep the work small, like an 8x10 or a 12x16. And this painting right here is a 14x18, which is just on the verge of being a little too big. But if you're using cheap, small canvas panels, you're not going to be too concerned about it if it doesn't work out. Another thing that can help quite significantly while painting something new is to be painting it from life. Back in 2016, I reached out to a real art hero of mine, James Gurney, and I was asking him a couple questions, and he wrote back, saying, one of the keys to believable landscapes is to practice by painting plein air studies from nature. Try using your maquettes to set up perspective angles of their forms in actual lighting. Lighting is the key to realism. And when I saw that, lighting is the key to realism, everything changed for me. And I, that's when I started doing landscapes and wildlife and really focusing in on the shape, color, and light, and not so much just the subject matter. A couple months after that, I grabbed a spare canvas board, some old paints, and some ancient brushes from my dad's college days, and had my first go at plein air painting. And I will admit, in the beginning stages of it, they were very abstract, and it was kind of hard to make out exactly what they were. It looked more like an impressionistic slash abstract painting. So after one plein air painting after another, I tried to incorporate the same techniques of landscape painting in the field as I would with landscape painting in the studio. So it's amazing how important it is to be painting from life, whether that's in the studio or on plein air. And I had several different live references for this painting. One was this small Dodge Challenger SRT model that I made a little while ago, and it was a 2008 model, so the body style of the Challenger has definitely changed, but there are aspects of it that I can use and incorporate into the painting I'm working on now. And another good source of reference material that I have is the RT scat pack that we have. And if there's any distortion in the image that I'm working from right now, I can always go out, look for the part of the car that is a little distorted in the photo, take a picture, bring it back into the studio, and refer to it from there. And some of you might be wondering about the kinds of materials I'm using for this painting. And I'm actually using the Winsor Newton Artisan Water Mixable Oil Paint. And if you want to find out more about those paints, that link is in the description below. I've also been using the Ivory Dagger Brush from Rosemary & Co. And you can't go wrong with these daggers. They are so versatile in the way you can use them. You can create a fine line, and you can also cover a large amount of surface area quite quickly. So check the link in the description below to check out those brushes. Well, I'm getting pretty close to being finished with this painting. Right now I'm just adding the final highlights around the wide body here before I go into working on that tire. just by adding these final little highlights to the image to really make it pop, the SRT Hellcat Dodge Challenger is finally complete. Alright, well I think I'm officially lost.
which is why it's a good time to end this week's video. So thank you so much for watching. I know it was a little something different, but I kind of enjoyed going through a different process of painting, different techniques, textures, forms. So hopefully you got a little something out of it as well. And as always, you can find me on Instagram. But most importantly, head on over to my website at CodyOldham.com and subscribe to my weekly newsletter. Thank you so much for watching. And if I could just find my way home now. Oh.